Good evening and welcome to Sheep's Head in West Cork. Thank you for joining me again. Uh, I'm here on Sheep's Head to, to vlog the Sheep's Head Lighthouse on my um, journey around the country, vlogging some of the most impressive lighthouses, and we have quite a few uh, here in Ireland. Um, now, I've got to tell you the truth. This is the second time that I've been here. Uh, the first time that I was here, we had a few technical difficulties. About six weeks ago, Darren Lane and myself came down beautiful evening just like it is again this evening uh, we got some great shots some great drone footage but unfortunately uh, as I said this is what happened good evening and welcome to sheep's head um, Now the reason that things did, went a bit pear-shaped was because we'd been out for two days um, shooting from probably around half five in the morning until probably 11 o'clock at night. Um, back in early July, that's exactly when it was getting dark. So uh, by the time we arrived at Sheep's Head, it was a little late. We'd spent a little too long over across the other uh, peninsula across from me here on Mizzen Peninsula in a beautiful place called Three Castles Head. Uh, by the time we got here, I realised that it was a little late. I had things like drone footage to do. I had things like this introduction. Likewise, I had to take shots itself and finally a lot of B-roll. Too much to do in too little time. Um, yes, did it, was I affected? Most definitely. In fact, I'd like to say I was near on frantic. Here's a clip of exactly how I was looking on that day. I don't know, I'm not finished yet. And of course, to rub salt in the wounds, who walks by but Mr. Cool. Anyway, we're back here today. It's a beautiful evening as well. And we're hoping to try and fill in the gaps. I see what he's at. A touch of deja vu about that. Sheep's Head, Martin Red, is one of the smaller of West Cork's peninsulas. To the north is the Beira Peninsula, and to the south is Mizzen Head. Bantry Martin Blue is at the start of the northern coast and is 35 kilometres from Sheep's Head Lighthouse. The lighthouse was constructed in 1968 to prevent the oil tankers from running aground on their way to the oil refinery on Whitty Island, which is marked in purple. The car park is situated a kilometre from the lighthouse and is a 15 minute walk along an undulating track. Okay, so now we've arrived down at the lighthouse itself. Um, the wind is certainly blowing a gale down here. I have come down low just to do this, uh, these few words because um, up higher on the particular headland and from where we'll be taking an awful lot of the shots, the wind is extremely strong and I'm wondering whether you'll be able to pick up the sound or whether we'll have a debacle like I had the last time I was here. 
Um, there are quite an amount of steps down to the lighthouse itself. Um, it is a pretty good point to actually take maybe your first shot uh, from, let's say, this side of the lighthouse. Uh, you can use the actual um, lines of the rails, the red lines, and they're very distinctive uh, as lead-in lines uh, up to the lighthouse itself. It, it certainly will be one of the easier shots to take. Later, I'm going to take some shots from further out on the headland at different angles. All of them, uh, um, as, as I'll be looking at the lighthouse, the, uh, the lighthouse will be to the right hand side with the sun off to our left. Um, but I won't be vlogging uh, or talking to you directly to the camera because there just isn't the space there. Um, it's quite steep here, uh, a lot of shale on those steep ledges and on the, um, on the, the hillsides uh, and the rock sides around uh, this particular peninsula. So it's one that you really, really need to be careful. But if you are in a good position, and I'll show you some of them in a minute, um, there certainly are some wonderful shots to be got here as well. taking my first shot from this particular angle I am precariously perched on a very steep slope here um, one mistake and well sayonara um, this beautiful light coming from the left hand side onto the um, the lighthouse and um, I'd say we're about 20 minutes away from um, sunset so that's where I am at this moment. There are several standing spots down further to my left, but some are occupied and there is severe shale in some of them. And I don't want to find myself slipping down that shale as this particular position I'm in at the moment is precarious enough. There's the sun. And so what I'm using, and I'd love to be able to show you, but it's a bit precarious. I'm using a 1635 initially to try and take in the sun as well. Not uh, particularly easy because there's a contrast between the darkness of the lighthouse and the actual strength of the sun. I could try and put in um, uh, um, a, a grad, uh, but I'm afraid it would probably just cut diagonally across or even take the top off the lighthouse, so I'm not going to try that. And so when I arrived at one of the viewing terraces, uh, overlooking the lighthouse well it was already occupied and fair play so then I had to make my way down further to the next lower viewing point okay I've come over to a pretty precarious position again as you can see there's a lot of shale in front of me um, one step on that particular shale and could see me fall I think it's 93 meters uh, up from the sea level this particular lighthouse is and I have absolutely no intentions of going for a swim at this particular time so I'm going to shoot from here it isn't a great shot let's be very honest because that shale is taking up quite a bit of the area but what I will do is I'll use a 1635 on a 5D Mark III uh, which is an excellent landscape photographer's um, uh, camera 
camera and hopefully we'll be taking both the um, the uh, lighthouse and the sun at the same time. That last shot turned out far better than I expected. As the sun began to set I moved closer to the lighthouse, a lighthouse that is sadly younger than I am myself. Most of the shots are taken with a wide angle lens and are hand held as the shutter speeds were mostly either 1 50th of a second or faster. As the sea is too far down I didn't even contemplate any long exposure shots uh, to give the water a milky effect as it wouldn't have had any real effect on the photos. My advice to you is take plenty of shots and experiment with different viewpoints here. The second of the next two shots was taken from a safe position down under the lighthouse about 20 metres from where this video clip was shot. On my return visit, I climbed down closer to the end of the headland to see how the lighthouse would photograph from that position. Again, I found a different dynamic with the diminutive lighthouse almost lost in the rocky outcrop. From my shot, I placed the lighthouse in the top right hand quarter of the photo and the sea in the bottom left. The cliff face made a nice diagonal line dividing the photo between the lighthouse and the sea. From my final position I crossed the steps leading down to the lighthouse and climbed to a position above and behind it. This made for a completely different composition with an electrical lead in line and the lighthouse now being on the left hand side of the sea as I was looking at. And so we headed for home. Many thanks to my wingman Darren Lane and many thanks to you for tuning in. I'll talk to you again soon. Till then, take care.